as if something quite evil lived here on this ground. Come on, who's the warrior? Brooke, Brady, follow the sheep. Down into the same. So they followed the sheep into the deep, dark cave, and they thanked all the gods for the blessings they gave. That's it. I heard music. I don't like this one bit. I'll see you guys later. I'm going out to sit. But it was far too late to get out of that place, because in that moment, they came face to face. Or rather face to me, because the monster was awfully tall. He roared awfully loud, and they felt awfully small. They couldn't run away or call the Greek cops, because in that moment, they faced the one-eyed, big-tastic, monstrous Cyclops. You're doing your little grumulous men, and have an appetite to eat three or ten. For you see, though the Cyclops was awfully tall, he had a heart which was twenty two sizes too small. And with that, the brave men broke into a run. But the Cyclops, he was quick. He was having great fun. He plunged out and snatched them. I think we're done. And with one gulp, he ate crew number two and crew number one. All right, you good monster. You've picked on a week. But I am called Ajax, and I am not me. Quiet, you dunce, or you'll end up as a brunch for this gigantic one eyed meat Cyclops to munch. But I've got a plan for this type of store. And in pops crew member three and crew member four. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where were you guys when all the sports at? We didn't say a whole lot. We sit in the back. <laughs> I don't mean to be rude, but I cannot but notice that you think we are food. Please let us leave and spare the lives of these men. And we will never, I mean never, bug you again. And if I may, may I ask you one question? How do you see without depth perception? Oh, the sight's like a spy with only one eye. If I try, I can spy a small fly flying by. I can spy with my eye the zoom and boom bats, or flipping and flapping the zoom and boom hats. Oh, you really don't know what it's like to be me. You see these amazing, spectacular sights that I see. So your quest to leave is here by tonight. Don't try to leave. I got you all spy. You're right, mighty creature. How could I possibly think? that a poor man like me could outthink your great thing. As a gesture of peace, take this jug of red wine, drink all that you want, and have a fabulous time. Thank I gotta say, you Greeks sure are nice. I'll put in that one on a bed of fried rice. So as I cost a drink, and he wasn't quite done, he had to wash down crew number two and crew number one. Luckily for him, Odysseus had more. He drank and he drank, and he drank till he swore. But then all of a sudden, the cave seemed like a spin spinner's fun. He passed out on the floor. Odysseus had won. Great, let's go and get back to the shore. You forgot, that big bowler is blocking the door. It's a good thing I'm the strongest man you ever will see. Stand back, my dear man, and leave it to me. So Ajax, he huffed, and he puffed and he swore, but he couldn't quite remove that rock from the door. This rockiest lock seems beyond normal men. I guess we'll all starve to death in here then. We're not going to starve, you rock-headed man. For I am a planner, and I have a plan. First, we grind down that giant's only a sty. Then, beneath those fat sheep, ourselves we will tie. What? Trust me. So he took a big spear, which was a mighty nice spine, and he gave that eye socket a mighty fierce grind. <laughs> oh! I, my only eye spine, I, you mean hold for bricks, you're going to die. But he found it was not an eye, he was really quite blind. He groped and he groped, but he couldn't quite find. Still he fell with his hand, but he only made to sell sheep. And the crew members made not a lonely eat piece. Somehow they got out, they got past by the big rock. How did they do it? Did they whistle it or not? I will find these men from the nation of Greece. I will grab them and eat them one piece by one piece. And as he opened the door under the sheep, they did creep, and escaped into day without making one peep. But one of his men was allergic to wool. <laughs> uh, sneak! So the giant reached down and ate crew number three. <laughs> Odysseus got all of his men right back to his ship, and they were already ready to get on with this trip. When who should appear, much to their surprise, was a man who'd been waiting, crew member five. <laughs> Wait, what happened you, mate? Why are you still alive? Well, I'm not as crappy or as cool as crew member five. For a guy named for a number, he's got a mighty big head. Don't worry about him. Let's sail forth instead. So on they will sail, and none of them got. Who are skipping? Because he's not important, but on. <laughs>
I've been holding this bag for nine nights and nine days. I'm really quite tired. Let's rest for a ways. A weasel, a chicken, or a squirrel in drag? Maybe it's a trigger in tiny clothes. Or the bark of a dog named Scuffly Puss? I'm like what hurts, it could be. No way, number five is no sneak. Yeah. But crew member four was a far different sort. He was the sort who assisted Principal Dolphin in her court. He looked up at that bag in the busy slept, and with a sniggling smile, up to it he crept. Maybe there's some gigantic mushroom inside. Or a big pepper bird with wings on three sides. But it was no mushroom, no bird, or frilly haired fruit, as up from the bag left wing one and wing 